We are back for the second part of this week's episode, the review portion. We told you last week that we would be reviewing Wild Turkey 101, and so we're here to review it. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. I'm going to do a turkey impersonation, shall I, or should I just skip it? Let's just not do that okay. awkward enough. Please, please. Well, oh, wait, do it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that was... Leave all of that in. <laughs> that's, that's what she said. Um, Wild Turkey 101. <laughs> we are reviewing it tonight. I've got a handle of this. Um, bourbon from Wild Tur- Turkey Distillery in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Uh, obviously, 101 proof. That's where it gets the name. There is no age statement. People online say it is between six to eight years, so we will trust them. A mash bill of 75% corn, 13 rye, and 12% malted barley. Um, the label says that it's high rye, but I would I disagree that 12 or 13% is high rye. Um, Here we go. Here's a look at it. High yeah. rye is what it says. That's right. I, I don't. Uh, 30, that seems low to me. We did some quick Googling before, and high rye is probably closer to like, 20 to 30. So I don't know. I think that's a little, little crazy there price. You can get this anywhere from, I mean, I've seen it from 1999 for a seven fifty all the way up to Brendan said he's seen it for like 29 30. My handle of it was 26 99. So if you're paying $30 for a 750, that's not a great deal. We'll talk about valuation later. Um, those are the key points. You guys, have you guys been sticking your nose in this? You guys ready to roll and review this thing? Yes, been nosing this for about 10 minutes and also nosed it earlier today too. So Let's rip. There's that. Let's roll. Brendan, Ben already took a sip. He's cheating. Brendan, let's get your nose thoughts here. Mm. Ben is uh, Ben is out of control today, I think we've learned so far. But it's all right. I, I like it. I like a little high rise spice in my life. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, of high rise, so despite the uh, controversial high rise label for it, uh, this is a really spicy nose. I think that's the first thing that kind of jumps out the glass is a, a profound level of spiciness. And as I kind of let it settle in and it got to aerate a little bit uh, more so for me, I'm getting kind of like the like cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, base, baking spices, I guess is what really jumps out with layers of vanilla too. Those are the main t- uh, smelly notes for me early on here. Yeah, I like, uh, I get a lot of spice. I also on the back, I get a little bit of fruit. So like, as you get past the spice, it'll get into like some kind of like berry, like a blackberry jam, you know? I, I made, I made mm. my wife smell this earlier and uh, she got citrus right away. That's what jumped out for her. And that would kind of go back to our Russell's Reserve uh, mm. review where, where Ben and I both had that nebulous uh, citrus. Was it lemon? Was it orange? I don't know. It's just zesty and, and citrusy. What, what about you, TJ? What are you getting there as you're starting to, you're, you're a little bit slower than us on the nosing today. You're playing catch up. Yeah. So I'm getting a lot of those spices you guys talk about less vanilla than, than normal, a little bit of that citrus or fruit um, that you guys talked about, you know, really common characteristic of bourbon that I'm not finding in this is any kind of floral notes. So not only do I want to tell you guys what I am smelling, I'm missing that here. So I don't know if that's a product of it being a little bit younger, right? Closer to the six year side, but yeah, definitely the spice. The spice is what jumps out right away. And as you get more into it, definitely some of those fruitier notes. All right, let's taste this thing. Or as Ben says, something I did five minutes ago Um, or hours at your case. Mm. It's good. It's good. Tell us about it, Ben. You're the high proof guy on this show. Tell us about your tasting notes. Yeah. So I like bourbon that fights me a little bit. Right. (laughs) And so you get into like this 85, 90 proof stuff. That's just, you know, easy to drink, but 101 proof little higher rye says on the label, high rye. (laughs) And, uh, it's just, it's good, man. It drinks, uh, with a a little more heat than your typical, like 90, 95. Um, but you definitely get a lot of baking spice, but I still, I still get a sweet, like not vanilla caramel end. I get more of, you know, like the fruit, more, more fruit than anything as I'm drinking. It's great. Uh, the, the fruity note that I'm getting from this is cherry and more so like a cherry cola almost. Um, mm-hmm. Like IBC, a dark, like a dark, dark cherry. Like yes, not, not just like a, not a super sweet cherry, but like a very dark cherry. Yeah. 
have you guys ever had the IBC line of like they have root beer and they have a cherry soda or they have a cherry cola and it's it's super dark and rich it's not like a cherry coke where it's got a little bit of cherry in it there's just like it's vibrant red which is probably artificial uh coloring but still it's it's super cherry and that's that's what i get with with this uh the taste it's really pleasant i like it a lot yeah, i i'm with I, you i kind of crapped on it but i'm getting a lot of the spice that they talked about right like maybe the high extra rye is just the actual extra flavor. rye baby but it's this almost like very, a, uh, a spicy cherry like that's mm-hmm. all you know like you talked about that like my grandpa used to get like the um black cherry ice cream <laughs> You know, like so, totally like old man uh, dessert, and that's kind of like that dark cherry that Brendan's talking about is there. Um, mm-hmm. Not a lot of vanilla, not a lot of caramel, some spice, but I'm kind of with you on some of those notes for sure. There's something, and I get some of the vanilla, but the caramel, not a ton of. Um, I start to get some of the fruit, like like almost like a lemony, um, really like lemon squares. You know, that kind of dessert, like a little bit of of that uh, with the zestiness, although not quite with the bready note of it. I'm just trying to think of whether like kind of citrusy note I'm getting there, but I'm definitely picking that up. Uh, and then also like this earthy, maybe it's the oak, maybe it's just really oaky and that's what I'm getting, but there's like this earthy tobacco note kind of, but it's, it's comes like second or third to the cherry. I mean, the cherries, this is a cherry bomb for sure. Yeah. Does, I'll give you that. How does it finish guys? A little flat for me. I, I think I mean, it's got a little bit of spice, What? a little, a little bit of cake, but <laughs> But no, it's spicy. It's got a kick, but it's not, it goes away really quickly. It's like a firework and then just kind of fizzles out. So I don't know. It, it It's not the transition to where it kind of lingers into the, the sunset. It's not. Uh, I am the opposite. I love slow, long burn. You're definitely getting a lot of the ethanol and alcohol in the end. It's so nice. Like I said, I like it to fight me a little bit. So it fights you as, you know, as you're trying to drink it. It's great. Finish is great. So I think the finish is just hot. There's not a lot of character there. There's not a lot of, I'm not getting maybe a little bit of spice, just hot and spicy. So it's like chicken mm-hmm. wings. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> chicken wings in the glass. Last week we had apple pie in the glass. This week uh, we had chicken, chicken wings, chicken wings in, the glass. in the glass. So yeah, so I'm not, I mean, I don't love the finish. We'll kind of keep finishing it, I guess, as we uh, get a little closer to our numbered review. Um, but yeah, not a lot there on the finish for me. So I lean a little bit closer Brendan's way. Um, all right. Any other thoughts before we break this thing down and put some numbers on these things? Here's what I will say about the finish. Uh, this is a great bourbon. If you're looking to mix uh, any old fashions, cocktails, it's going to stand up to a lot of sweetness you add to it. So this is a great option for, for if you like a little bit of the burn in the back, if you want to just temper it down a little bit, great for cocktails. I agree with that for sure. I'll have another thought on that when we get to the end or I'll forget and then never bring it back up and somebody will tweet me and ask me for it. Our Instagram and Twitter handles are bourbon budget. So B-O-U, B-O-U-R-B. Oh God. Yeah. B- <laughs> it's been a long night. Oh, B-O-N, B-U-D-G-E-T. I almost thought like, did I say the O? Like did, what happened here? Uh, bourbon budget. Go check us out on Instagram and Twitter. Facebook as well. Bourbon on a budget, YouTube which is probably where you're watching this. Um, Let's number these things. Ben, again, this is your show. I know I'm the one that picked this thing, but two points out of this nose, where are you going? Ooh, I'm going one and a half. I like the nose. It's complex. It has, you know, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of spice, one and a half. Brandon? Yep, I'm at one and a half as well. It runs the gamut of of being complex, like Ben said. it's it's good it's not amazing it's not elite but it's certainly above average and, and pretty damn close to, to really good i'm going with a one i'm the guy that goes higher on everything most weeks but yeah the nose does nothing for me other than a lot of spice very very little outside of that taste ben you start us off again mm, i'm gonna go three this is probably one of the better tasting ones we've done so far out of our scale of four ben's given this three which is a little bit lower than you gave buffalo tracers to 2.5 and on par with the russell's tenure um i'm going a little lower here as well i'm gonna go 2.5 i do think i mean i like the cherry but there's just not a lot outside of that i'm going just a tad lower than ben brendan 
Are you uh, are you online with one of us? Or are you going to break the mold uh, here? I am. I am online with one of you, and I kind of went actually between two point five and three, but I ultimately went with three here because again, there's complexity to it. The cherry bomb is, it's you're right. There's not a ton to it outside of like four or five different flavors, DJ. But like what it does, it does <laughs> remarkably well. Um, how's it finish, guys? I went down to I, I went on a zero with this i just it's it's spicy and then fizzles out and i just don't get a ton of flavor from it maybe other than like some kind of vanilla icing and cinnamon and that's about it so and i went high on the taste so i'm going with the zero here on uh on finish I'd go half i'd go half it's 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 solid it's a solid finish it's more than we've been experiencing so half so ben gave russell's reserve a zero on the finish he gave buffalo trace a 0.5 and then goes 0.5 today. I think I am in the 0.5 category as well. Um, how cohesive or complex are you guys going with this one? I, I'm going to go with 0.5. It's and you could easily round up to it, but it's it's cohesive with the nose to the taste, so it's got that going for it. It's pretty complex. I think, especially if we're factoring the price, it's complex. So uh, there's certainly more complex bourbons out there, but this is a solid one at what you're paying, especially. So 0.5 for me. I would agree completely. Uh, complex for what we're paying. So got no problem with that. Great. 0.5. Yeah, I'm keeping it with that. 0.5 as well. So we're going around the horn, all agreeing on that. Um, in fact, we have given a 0.5 for cohesiveness and complexity on every single <laughs> thing that we all three of us, every single thing, except I gave Russell's a, a full one. Um, that just speaks to how cohesive we are. Mm. as a group right so just saying <laughs> thank you ben uh <laughs> so i gave this a 4.5 out of eight ben gave this a 5.5 out of eight and brendan gave it a five out of eight uh so all above average right so four and even my low score of four and a half out of eight is still above 50 percent uh when you guys think about the value out of the two points how are we scoring it again ben's the ben's got the highest on here so we'll start with ben two two it's great it's 20 bucks i can buy a bottle of this or a whole entire handle for 26 it's great for any party you want to throw mixing great so yeah two brendan i'm with ben on this one it's two it's it's one of the better values out there a lot of people hate on it because it's kind of a ugly bottle and doesn't have a great reputation uh, but it's it's yeah. far from swill it's it's really good. Uh, so two for me, it's one of the best values out there. And I think our scores kind of indicate as much. Yeah, I, though I did not rate this super, super high in a 4.5 out of eight. Uh, if you can get a handle of an above average whiskey for $26, um, that is a really good deal. The value is there. It is absolutely drinkable and sippable neat or with an ice cube or with a little yes. bit of water in it. You don't have to mix it like Ben's talking about. Obviously, your, your Buffalo Trace and your Russell's Reserve, that is more typically what people are going to think of drinking neat. But Wild Turkey 101 does not have to be a mixer. Um, it makes a great mixer. It makes a heck of an old-fashioned. Uh, I made some last night with it. you know. So it is a really good bourbon. But it doesn't have to be just a mixer. Bringing our total scores for the day to six and a half, seven, and seven and a half. Ben rating this heavy. I'm a little bit on the low side. Um, and then Brendan right in the middle, but a pretty good score. I, I think six, six and a half out of 10 is really, really good, especially for, like you said, 20 bucks for a, a 750 of it. Uh, I think this is a good bourbon. I think this is one, again, that you can mix. You can drink straight. You can put an ice cube in it, open it up with some water, whatever you want to do. A, an overall good bourbon. Any closing Don't sleep on it. Don't, Don't sleep is, on wild is, turkey. Is that Ben's top score up to this point? I know that ties me for Russell's, which uh, we're wild turkey whores in this uh, in this household, and apparently Ben's as well. Yeah, um, Ben gave maybe Ben's highest. Ben gave Russell's a seven, and he gave Buffalo Trace a six point five. This was his highest. So, uh, all right. What, what we go. also may have found is that if Ben starts drinking earlier in the day, he rates things a little bit higher. So. That's very valid. That's very valid. Yes, <laughs> that is a variable we did not account for. Yes, sponsors. Yes. If you want to send me a couple bottles to review, I'll give you higher, <laughs> higher scores. So, um, all right, cool. So that's it for Wild Turkey One Hundred and One. A really good pour. 
as a mixer, neat. However, great price. And we didn't talk about this. For availability and proof, like you can find this anywhere and everywhere. It is not mm-hmm. difficult to find. If it's not yeah. at your local liquor store, I don't know what they're doing. Um, but super easy to find and a pretty good proof on it too. It's not so, so watered down. Um, like Ben talked about some of that 85, 80 proof stuff that's like pretty low. I got a question. Would we recommend this to, I guess, beginners? Like Buffalo Trace is one I would mm. recommend to someone who's pretty early on in their adventure. And it wasn't a whole lot different value wise, but it was much more drinkable and, and accessible, I guess. I, I would say no to answer That's my own a good question, question. But what do, you, what do you guys think as far as like, at what point in your journey do you say Wild Turkey 101 is something that you should should buy and have in your on your shelf? So mm. I think I think for the fact that you know, are your brand new bourbon drinkers drinking stuff neat like we are, you know, or are they mixing stuff to start? And so like if they're going to potentially mix it or throw it into an old fashioned or maybe throw an ice cube in it, it's probably not the worst for that. It's probably a little hot and a little spicy for somebody brand new, you know, getting into it. And that's where I'd probably go with your Russell's or your Buffalo Trays or something like that. You know, we can get more into this, but when you're first starting on your journey, I think you should grab a couple of different bottles and I would actually recommend this as, as being one of them. So now if you're just going to grab one bottle and that be all that you kind of start out with probably wouldn't be my first pick, but if you're grabbing three or four to kind of get into some different things and try some different things, I'd lean yes on this. Um, Ben, break this tie. Mm, It's a good question. I think I'm, thank you. Gosh, I am leaning. I'm leaning. No, just because it drinks spicier and hotter than a lot of your other, bourbons that are quote more entry um so i would probably lean no does every collection need a wild turkey 101 i would say yes but for the ultimate beginner mm, i'm probably leaning no i think i smelled a, a content idea for you guys uh, for us guys down the future a little bit of uh maybe like a budget where we say hey here's 80 bucks for i got i've figure. already got i've already thought about this all right all right hey hundred dollar collection what are we stocking a bar with i'm with uh, you i'm with you i already thought about it patent pending before, wrap it up tj wrap it up before we get into any of that we appreciate you guys hanging out for our review of wild turkey 101 we will be back next week where we have another podcast and review another bourbon for you guys. And we couldn't be more excited. Follow us on social media, bourbon budget. I'm not going to try and spell it again because I, I am <laughs> one whole drink down of wild Turkey one on one and I couldn't do it sober. So follow us until next time. Cheers. And thanks for hanging out. Cheers. Cheers.